Yes. Hi, Girish. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi. Our recording got interrupted. Um, there was a, okay. yeah. So we'll, um, basically, uh, in the earlier episode, we had just started talking about the theory of argumentation. Okay. How do you argue your case when there are uh, uh, multiplicity of views? How, uh, you know, how do you debate? How do you argue? How do you present your views? How do you examine the other person's views and so on? Okay, this is the this is a, uh, a very very important part of the development of any any philosophy or any school of thought because obviously there will be other schools of thought which will clash with you, which differ with you in their approach, in their hypothesis, in their methodology, and so on and so forth, and their worldview. So uh, then, how do we? You know how can there be effective collaboration or even even arriving at a, a, a consensus or if not a consensus at least um, the, uh, a, a civilized debate a civilized discussion uh, of between different approaches. So this was very very important, and in fact the Nyaya Sutras, uh, the which are the foundational texts for uh, Indian logic, uh, spelt it out. Uh, and uh, this uh, was further um, explained at, in great detail by Charaka, the famous, uh, you know, um, uh, Ayurveda Pandit, uh, who wrote Charaka Samhita. And he devoted a, a large section of one of his chapters uh, to this theory of debate. And uh, um, uh, so clearly it shows that even the uh, that system of medicine, which was one of the sciences of that time. Uh, obviously, there were contending systems and contending theories and contending results of, uh, if you say, this, this, this approach to this dealing with this, this affliction or this, this disease, you know, uh, then somebody else will say, no, but I've tried this and that has worked and, and so on. Or it might be that you have a theory of why your system is working and, and so on and somebody else has a different theory of what is going on. Okay, right. So, uh, um, so obviously there had to be a, a clash or a or a debate. Okay. So even uh, today we talk about scientific debate. I mean, in, in science it happens all the time. There are contending theories, whether it is cosmology, whether it is atomic physics, nuclear physics, particle physics, anything you'd look at in any branch of science. There are always contending theories, contending models. Uh, and uh, uh, and so on and uh, only uh, the thing is uh, they clash but at the same time uh, that clash is finally resolved through a test and observation and an experiment right but uh, so in science you do, you consider that there is a uh, when two theories are giving the same result then there is a clash you can say you can there is a debate but the settling of the debate happens only with experiment but if both are giving the same experimental result, then they both are, you can say, more or less equally valid. One may be uh, more intellectually appealing than the other and so on to certain people. So there may be two schools that come into being. For example, in the case of uh, cosmology, uh, uh, Hoyle and Narlikar uh, put forward a theory of what was called the, um, uh, you know, where there is both uh, constantly there is creation and destruction in the universe. Okay. It is called steady state theory. Whereas the there was another approach called the Big Bang theory, where they said that the origin the origin of the universe is in uh, 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 an explosion at certain point in history in time, and that the uh, the the universe is expanding, and the expanding matter, energy, etc., as they cooled off, created the galaxies, stars, etc., etc. Okay, now. The hoyle narlikar theory, the steady state theory also gave a certain explanation of the universe. The Big Bang theory also gave the same explanation to the universe. So how do you, uh, both were equally contending theories in the 60s. And then came the evidence, experimental evidence to show that the universe is expanding. So that expanding universe could not be explained by Hoyle and narlikar So the Big Bang theory became the official theory for, you can say, last 50 years. Okay. Uh, which is accepted theory and so far all the evidence, experimental evidence, observation by experiment in the case of cosmology, you can't really do experiments on cosmology, right? It's observations and, and all that on stars and galaxies 
uh, and their light uh, which uh, you capture in your uh, instruments etc from that you you do you deduce what could be happening and so on so they uh, so big bang theory is now the accepted theory uh, as a verified theory based on the evidence that is available and uh, Narlikar himself accepted that, even though he had propounded the steady state theory with his uh, um, guide uh, advisor in Cambridge, uh, Fred Hoyle, uh, who both were uh, great astrophysicists and continue to be. Okay, uh, There is no rancor about this, that uh, some other theory proved to be uh, more correct and actually uh, both, uh, you know, was verified by experiment. Now, but, but in the case of philosophy, in the case of worldview, uh, there, there is sometimes uh, um, there is no clear proof of anything. Okay, there is no clear test to prove anything. There is very difficult to disprove or disprove certain things. So then it becomes a matter of choice. Which system you like? Which system you prefer? Okay, and so on. Uh, whose logic appeals to you? And so on. But anyway, but when these ideas contend, and this is a long history of debates. In this, there is Upanishadic debates, and uh, there is post-Upanishadic debates, and uh, between the Buddhists and the, uh, and the Vedantis, uh, there is debate. There is a uh, Nyaya, Nyayikas, and uh, Buddhists. Uh, there is a debates. The Jainas, uh, even Jaina, there is said that in Mughal courts there were debates between Jain scholars and Islamic scholars, and so on. Okay, so the, this this issue of uh, debates. Uh, is a is a our argumentation. Is, there is a long history of it in, in India. Now these were either organized by the scholars themselves, which are called Vidwat Parishads, or by the kings, uh, royalty, etc. You know, to uh, in their courts, where uh, the the leading uh, proponents of a particular theory or particular philosophy uh, are uh, are brought in, and uh, the the two uh, have to argue their cases. Okay, uh, and there is also a whole uh, bunch of uh, people. You can call them jury. You can call them whatever, or even common, uh, you know, uh, who are uh, uh, erudite people who are listening to both sides. Okay, um, now, uh, but what is the purpose of the debate? This is very very important. There are two kinds of purposes to a debate. One purpose, which is what happens most of the time in school debates, for example, or uh, the famous debates of the Ox Oxford Union. Okay, uh, you, may, you might remember Shashi Tharoor presenting something and somebody else presenting something else and so on. In fact, there is a Oxford debating union and uh, it's a, it has been there for hundreds of years now and debating union organizes debates. And we know that in almost all elite schools, people are trained to debate because then they are trained to be lawyers or even parliamentarians. This is, this is a tradition of English, English uh, uh, schools, uh, public schools. And that has come into our uh, school system also. But there, the point is, the goal is to score a point. The goal is to win the debate. Okay. So this is very important. The, 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 uh, the uh, one set of people or one set of debates and the debaters are only interested in winning, winning the debate. But in, in, in uh, Bharatiya Darshana, when you talk about debate, there is a, there are, they classify debates into three kinds. Vada, Jalpa and Vitanda. Okay, they, they say there are three kinds of debates. The first and the best form, they say, is Vada. Vada, the goal is not victory or defeat, but to arrive at the truth, to arrive at a better understanding of a particular problem. Okay, so the uh, this is very important. So the method you both sides are constrained to use and are forced to use are very different from a debate where the only goal is winning. So the other kind of debates, Jalpa and Vitanda are of that type. Okay. The Jalpa is a typical, you can say, school debate or a Oxford Union debate and so on. Okay. And many times you see on TV, TV debates, so they're, they they sometimes uh, basically you, you point scoring hota hai, and uh, sometimes the so-called moderators and uh, also anchors get uh, totally involved in it. They are partisan. They are, there is no uh, neutral party, etc. And everybody shouts at each other and the audience, uh, uh, you know, either enjoys it or shuts it off. Okay, depends. But nothing is achieved in that, right? And you might uh, appreciate the cleverness of a particular point or a cleverness of another point or how vicious one per per person was and so on and so forth. Okay, so in Jalpa, Jalpa is defined as that, where your goal is to win. 
and by hook or by crook. Okay, the methods you use to win that debate are by hook or by crook, which means your aim is not to arrive at the truth. So you take all kinds of like methods to put that person down, cut him to pieces, show that ridicule him, uh, hit him below the belt, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is this is typical. Uh, this is this what describes Jalpa winning at any cost, because winning is a goal, not arriving at the truth. The third form, which is a form of Jalpa, where again winning is the goal. Okay, is called Vitanda. That means. Not only like in a, in a normal debate, what happens? Both sides give their thesis and then you cut cut the other person's uh, um, uh, thesis, right? There is Khandana and Mandana and so on, right? But the point is, in the Vitanda, you only criticize the other person. And your focus is only to cut the other person to pieces, his logic, his basis, his hypothesis, etc., but if you are asked, what is your thesis? What are you proposing? You have nothing to say. So you always avoid stating your position. So, so this is the most useless type of uh, people who get into debate, whose only uh, thing is to criticize others. And this happens a lot of times. I mean, even in a normal meeting, when we are having a meeting and everybody is supposed to give their view on a particular proposal, there are people who are waiting to see what other people are going to say. They don't have their own independent view. They don't have an independent proposal and they, they just sit quiet till other people start talking and then try to find some something wrong in the other people's arguments. Okay. Whereas actually everybody has been asked to present their view about that proposal. <laughs> right. Right. So this, this is with and other because they actually haven't thought of or on the go, on the go looking at other people's things, they want to concoct one, one thesis of their own, one approach of their own. Because actually they have not thought deeply about what should be their position. So instead of saying, let me think over it. I don't want to like say anything now. Or I don't know enough about this subject. They think there is an insult to themselves. So they want to state their view without having thought about it. So they just, but they don't have a view. So they pick on other people's views or only focus on cutting other people's views, criticizing other people's views. This is Vitandavada. This is, you can say, the worst form of debate or a discussion. The second one, Jalpa is what you see all around you. Most of the time, basically you are point scoring, you are trying to win and not arrive at the truth and use any methods. And one of the famous methods now, in fact, a phrase has been made out of it called whataboutery. Means there is a point that person, there is a point under discussion and the person has said something about it. Now you are also say, you are supposed to say something about that point or criticize his statement about that point. Instead, you say, but what about that? You know, which has nothing to do with the point under discussion. <laughs> okay. You, you're saying something about some situation or some point. Instead of stating your views, either for or against that, agreeing with that other person or disagreeing with that other person on that point, you say, but what about that? You know, you jump to some other point and totally try to disrupt that whole discussion. And the end of it, want to show that, oh, but I also cornered him. Okay. This, which is called what about Terry? Okay. And this is what happens in most so-called political debates, public debates, and, and especially in, uh, in, the, uh, in the current media, the television, etc., uh, etc. Et okay. So again, nothing is achieved in that. I mean, you, both sides go back saying, oh, I made this point, I scored this point, and I have a set of supporters, and the other person has his set of supporters, and that's the end of it. But the real... Up, uh, the, the most fruitful approach the Darshanika said is Vada. In Vada, the first thing is, first of all, you state your, you are, you have a, you have thought a position, you have prepared a position on that subject. Second thing is, before you present your position, you try to understand the other person's position. Okay. To the fullest extent in the most strongest possible terms. So you in fact say that so and so, that is the other person's view is this, this, this. You say it publicly. And sometimes if you are, if you are a really knowledgeable person, you present the other person's point of view sometimes even better than the other person in the most strongest possible terms. Okay. This is called Puro Paksha. Puro Paksha means what is the other side saying really? 
Okay, so you should have understood it fully. What is the other side saying, etc. And what could be, you know, so state it fully, honestly. And then you put forward your views and say that why you think the other person's view is wrong or incomplete or partially correct, etc., etc. And why you think your, your point of view is this. Okay, so then the other person will take your view seriously because you have presented his views. He, he has also presented his views. And you also said, this, 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 these are your hypothesis, this is your method, this is what your argumentation, this is the result you are uh, reaching. And this is, this is what I am disagreeing with and I think this is what it should be. Okay. So the other person can think over it and if he thinks that your argumentation or your logic is more powerful or the data you are presenting is, is something which he didn't have, etc., etc., the, or the analogies you are drawing or, or your explanation you are giving is more acceptable than, than the other person actually accepts it or rethinks his view because the purpose of both is not to win but to arrive at a better understanding of the issue. So this is the system of Vada and this is the only system, the uh, method of argumentation which leads to a better understanding, more refined understanding, more nuanced understanding and so on. Okay. So even in the, though we say debates don't settle anything, finally, you know, you, you need data, you need experiment, you need reality check. But still, even in the question of the debate, okay, you can use certain experimental data, observed data, etc., etc. Okay. Then the other person will have to look at that same set of data and give his view and not bring out some other data and so on, right? Uh, unless that is very relevant which, you know, you might have ignored it for some reason, etc. But but the purpose is very clear. Both are very serious seekers of truth. Okay. So that is the vada. And this is always maintained in the, in the philosophical Indian tradition uh, that this is the best form of debate. This is the best form of discussion. Now, we hardly see that. Puru Paksha. So, in fact, uh, interestingly, before I, I looked at, uh, I started studying Bharatiya Darshana, I came across this in Lenin's work in Materialism and Empirical Criticism. At one point he says, when he's talking about idealist philosophers like Berkeley and then other people who are agnostics and, you know, who are trying to confuse the issue, etc., Mark, etc. And he's presenting the materialist thing. He says there that we, in, a, in a polemic, don't, don't take some side issue and ridicule the opponent. Don't catch his weak points. Catch his strongest points, present his views in the strongest possible manner. And then you put forward your views to say that, uh, you know, why uh, anything is wrong with that and what is the actual alternative thesis that you are giving. So I was, I was really surprised that actually the theory in the Indian philosophy, Indian uh, darshanas or how to debate what is the Vada tradition is precisely that. Okay. So, uh, Charaka, of course, goes into great detail into many more uh, subtleties on uh, which are good debates, which are bad debates, which debates you should participate, which debates you should not even participate. Like, for example, many times it is said, no, don't argue with a Murkha. What does that mean? That means that there is no point in arguing with some, some idiot, okay, just because he wants an argument. Because you're just wasting your time. He's not interested in arriving at the truth. Neither does he have the uh, data or any such thing. He just wants to argue for argument's sake. Right? So on. So actually, Charak, Charaka's discussion is very long, very elaborate. And uh, and he says what should be the kind of audience, what in which kind of audience, what you should be doing. So, But what it shows is that there was a tradition of debate. Okay? This is very important. Okay? Because... In, that is how science grows. That's how even philosophy grows. Through healthy debate. Okay. And even today, people celebrate the, the debates between uh, Buddhists and Nyayakas uh, and uh, uh, the Mimosakas and uh, Nyayakas and, uh, and Vedantins and Nyayakas and so on and so forth. Okay. And they did debate with uh, the every one of them, the, the Vedic tradition. They have to like uh, debate uh, or at least mention what is the Charvaka position and so on. Okay, so though Charvaka position is uh, maybe diametrically opposite to theirs. Okay, and but they have to deal with it. Now, unfortunately, we do not have the Charvaka texts available to us to say how they argued. But but the the power of some of these things, like for example, 
one of the great uh, encyclopedia of indian philosophy was written around um, 1000 years ago by uh, madhavacharya or sayana it is and uh, it's called sarvadarshana sangraha so he he talks about all the darshanas so there, what he says about Charvaka Darshana, we can almost take it as representative of Charvaka Darshana because of the tradition he's, he's uh, sticking to. He's not making fun of Charvaka there. He's trying to present honestly what Charvaka thought. So in the absence of a Charvaka text, we have to take what Sarvadarshana Sangra says because we think he's honestly presenting the opponent's view. So his views were not Charvaka views, but he's presenting all the Buddhist views Charvaka views and so on, you know, all the different schools. Okay. So uh, I think uh, this is, this whole thing is uh, missing in uh, today's world. And the more we learn about it and we conduct our debates and discussions and even meetings in this manner, I think uh, all of us will benefit from it. So uh, I think uh, we can, that uh, we can uh, stop uh, today at this point. And uh, in the next episode, we'll look at some other interesting topic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.